Daimler wants to take the lead in driverless cars by 2020. Driverless cars cruise the streets by 2020. By 2020. Aiming to go driverless by 2020. Now that's the same year that Nissan, General Motors, and Google all say that they are going to have driverless cars on the road. I'm going to stay in control, but thanks anyway. By 2021, we will see autonomous vehicles in operation across the country in ways we can only imagine today. And my daughter, who will be 16 in 2021, won't have her driver's license. She will be using a service. Unfortunately, even though it is 2021, none of the rest of that is true. We don't have fully autonomous vehicles, let alone robot car services. And I don't have a daughter. Unlike the guy who actually said that back in 2016, President Obama's transportation secretary, Anthony Fox. So how the hell did a guy whose whole job was understanding transportation biff his prediction that badly? And not just the tech, because even if self-driving cars were ready, Americans aren't. Here's why. Pick the most dangerous animal in the American wilderness. Alligator, shark, mountain lion, snake, spider, porcupine, deer. The answer is deer, by a lot. While sharks might look scary, they don't wander out into the middle of Route 80 in Western Pennsylvania on moonless nights. Road accidents involving deer cause over a million crashes and an estimated $1 billion in damage and kill roughly 200 people in the US every year. They're really hard for drivers to see until it's too late. But what if they were spotted by the car instead, using an advanced combo of radar and cameras? A few years ago in Sweden, fancy Volvos started doing just that with the Swedish deer, which they call a moose. If the driver does not react, it would automatically hit the brakes. Anti-moose technology is just a start. Car makers have rolled out pedestrian and cyclist detection tech and automatic braking systems. <laughs> Auto drive These driver assistance systems are gradually taking some of the human error out of driving. The question is, can we remove all of it and make driving completely safe? That would be a big deal, because driving is one of the most dangerous things Americans do on the regular. Around 37,000 Americans die in motor vehicle crashes every year. Worldwide, it's more than 1.3 million, or 3,700 a day. In 2015, a widely cited report from McKinsey predicted that by mid-century, computer-driven cars could reduce road accidents by 90%. Of course, safety is only part of the dream. Imagine a driverless future where there are no designated drivers because outside the bar, waiting to take you home is your sober-ass car. You wouldn't even need a parking spot either because you could just tell the car to drop you off and, I don't know, go wherever self-driving cars go to relax. Or Make it do something useful while you're having that Negroni. Like, go get your dry cleaning. Road trip, heck, plug in the coordinates, let the camper drive itself all night, and wake up in some rad new place every morning, every day, for the rest of your life. Maybe this is your new home. Or maybe not because this fantastic, convenient, ultra-safe, self-driving future is running very late. It wasn't long ago that car companies were telling us with apparent certainty that we'd be able to forget how to drive ourselves around by yesterday. Headlines were telling us there'd be 10 million self-driving cars on the road by 2020, and that from 2020, you will become a permanent backseat driver. Just a year before this armada of self-driving cars was supposed to set sail, Elon Musk had this to say about the competition. It's financially insane to buy anything other than a Tesla. They will be, uh, it'll be like owning a horse in three years. That's because Musk said Teslas would be robo-taxis, driving around and earning money for their owners. If you fast forward a year, a little, maybe a year, maybe a year and three months, but next year for sure, we will have over a million robo-taxis on the road. That did not happen. 
on a scale created by the Society of Automotive Engineers, rating how self-driving a self-driving car is, with one representing simple stuff like adaptive cruise control, and five meaning full autonomy, Tesla's autopilot is a two. That means the car can do steering and acceleration, while the driver must be ready to take the wheel. But not all drivers have the same interpretation of ready to take the wheel. I think this guy is like passed out in his Tesla. On I-90 near Boston, alarming video that state police say shows extremely dangerous behavior. Some disturbing new video was taken on a busy freeway in LA and appears to show, as you can see right here, a driver asleep at the wheel. At least three Tesla drivers have died since 2016 while its so-called autopilot mode was engaged, with two failing to stop for tractor trailers and one hitting a concrete barrier. And the company is now facing a barrage of lawsuits over these accidents, and one over false advertising. A Munich court banned Tesla Germany from including full potential for autonomous driving and autopilot inclusive in the company's advertising. In August, the US government opened an investigation of Tesla's autopilot and traffic-aware cruise control systems, citing 11 accidents in which 17 people were injured and one was killed. In a rare moment of humility, Elon Musk said he didn't expect self-driving to be so hard, before he tempered that humility by saying, quote, but the difficulty is obvious in retrospect. Of course, there are other companies out there. In Arizona, a unit of Google's parent company, Alphabet, called Waymo, is testing level four, which effectively means that it is pretty much fully autonomous in some situations, but not others. At first glance, it looks like the full driverless Monty. All right, so we're pulling out of this parking lot right now and onto uh, public road. But there are some big limitations here too. In Phoenix, the cars stay within a 130 square kilometer area that's carefully mapped out to minimize surprises. There are roving support vehicles and a team of humans in nearby office ready to jump in as remote supervisors if things get dicey. Say, if the car has to interpret a human's hand gesture. And if the weather gets too crazy, the car might just stop until the weather gets better. But the technology is just one of the big problems. There's also the thorny issue of public sentiment. Not everyone is jazzed about their new self-driving overlords. Hell, there was even drama in Knight Rider. Since you are still recovering from your ordeal and I detect we're in a slightly irritable mood caused by fatigue, may I suggest you put the car in the auto cruise mode for safety's sake? No, you may not. Just 14% of Americans would trust riding in a self-driving vehicle, according to a survey conducted by AAA. And there are other big issues that even people who never want to step foot in a self-driving doohickey at all will want to have sorted out before they are everywhere. Like, what happens if one of them hits you? Who do you sue? the driver or the manufacturer. A debate over that very issue has bogged down congressional legislation that the industry says it needs to test and sell more autonomous vehicles. I mean, does it make sense to sue a robot driver? Now that the legal industry is becoming automated too, could a robot driver get sued by a robot lawyer? Perhaps until the robot judge kicks them both out of court and slaps them with robot contempt. Welcome to Traffic Court World most boring theme park of the future. It's been theorized that one benefit of our self-driving future might be fewer cars on the road. If you can hail an autonomous car when you need one, you might not need your own anymore. But it's not clear that's how things would play out. In one experiment, a group of families were given a chauffeur service as a proxy for fully self-driving cars. The result was that they took a lot more trips. A world of constantly cruising self-driving cars, picking up our dry cleaning and taking us home from the bar might be a congested, road-swamped, potentially unnavigable world where climate change speeds up. Some transport officials fret that if pedestrians know self-driving cars will always stop for them with computer-like precision, we might see a massive wave of jaywalking that brings towns like Manhattan to a standstill. And then there's the impact on millions of Americans who rely on driving for a living from cross-country truckers to rideshare gig workers. Around 9% of the American labor market works in transportation. In other words, even if the tech were ready tomorrow, we're not. Shit! I'm not familiar with that address. Would you please repeat that? <laughs> While predicting the future is tricky business, we can already see some of the road ahead. Automation has been increasing incrementally in our cars, one feature at a time, for years. It could continue apace, 
while some companies gradually expand their footprint of fully capable self-driving vehicles while mapping out the terrain and fitting programs to the community. Like, maybe our amazing self-driving future is going to arrive gradually, more slowly than we thought, as we all get used to it and figure it out together, piece by piece. Which definitely doesn't sound as awesome, or fun, or sexy, as full self-driving cars everywhere by some arbitrary date a couple years off. But maybe, that's not such a bad thing after all. And maybe, as American parents have been telling their kids on road trips ever since, I assume, the westward expansion. Are we there yet? No. We'll get there when we get there. I think. I think, uh, I think we call it, send it in. What do you think, Danny? And we'll ship it. And we'll ship it. <laughs> Straight to YouTube.